Hey guys, Josh here with West Orlando Power Sports and Marine from Oakland, Florida. We're at the Creval Boat Factory in Wildwood, Florida, and I'm here with Nick Ingles, who's the president. He's been nice enough to open up the tour and show us around today to uh, uh, let us see what makes Creval a little bit different from the competition. Thanks for having us, Nick. Thank you, Josh. Good to see you. Why don't we uh, start at the beginning, and which is the spray booth, and that's where the life of the boat begins. Well, let's take a look at the uh, spray booth and a mold that the 25 wow. ball that's just come out of the booth. Everything starts over here in our state-of-the-art spray booth in our clean room. And this is the process you see after it's come out of the spray booth. We, uh, here's the boat we've done in a sandstorm hull side and a black bottom. And uh, it's just come out of the booth. The next step is once the gel coat is set, we'll go ahead and get the skin coat on. And then we'll start doing the main laminate. And uh, we'll get into all the other uh, structural parts after that. This thing is absolutely giant sitting here. It's huge. Yeah, they do look a little bigger when they're in the uh, mold form. All right, let's take a look at the uh, next phase of the build, which is the structural system or the stringers of the boat. Okay. This is the mold for the stringer grid that goes in the boat. Wow. And you can see by looking at it just how much thought and, des and the design went into this. There are reliefs for chase tubes, reliefs for plumbing rigging, re uh, areas for the fuel tank to mount, for storage compartments. Even the structural support at the transom is, is designed into the grid. Now, yeah. we mold our grids here on purpose. Uh, we have a, a proprietary lamination procedure that we use to make our grid. And uh, we'll take a look at one down here, uh, and you can see exactly how it looks before it's put in the hall. Sure. Got While we're walking, Nick, I got a question. A lot, of, a lot of folks have brought it up to my attention in the boat industry. Some new uh, boat manufacturers will actually have old modes from pre-existing boat companies that maybe went out of business. Tell us a little bit about your tooling. Yeah, nothing here was purchased from any other company. Everything here is original, new tooling. Uh, from our own design. Here's a stringer grid that's uh, been partially cut. The outside flange has been cut off and next they'll cut off the inside flange. And you can see how thick it is and how it's built out of fiberglass. The next step is they'll flip this over, they'll put it on the hoist and they'll set it into the hull with a jig and a fixture so that we know it's in the right position every time. And they'll glass it in with a triaxial uh, blend of fabrics. And after we're done glassing it in, we'll drill holes in the top of it and we pump the entire stringer system full of foam, and then we pump all the outboard cavities of the boat full of foam. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's very impressive. So what kind of total time frame encompasses one of these from the time that it comes out of the mold till the time a potential de uh, dealer or a customer would take delivery of the boat? Uh, from out of the drum to out the door is roughly 20 to 25 days, depending on options. I see. Let's go look at the next major part of the, the uh, boat build, which is the deck. And here we've got a deck that's still on the mold, and you can see we've laid out some of the materials that we use, and uh, you can actually see this is one of the release wells that's gonna be in the back of the boat. And you can even see we've already pre-covered it in the foam, the insulating foam that we use. And uh, a lot of boat manufacturers, they'll put a little bit of foam on there and call it insulated. Well, we believe in a lot of foam. Overkill. Overkill is right. So More is better. We'll take this, this uh, release well, we'll flip it over, and we'll actually bond it in with a chemical agent. Uh, so when that uh, well is tied into the deck, it cannot leak. It is completely sealed around the edge. And if you look at this deck, you'll start to see some of the specific components that we use for structural reinforcement. For instance, here you're seeing a spear core material, which is a backer. Here you're seeing the honeycomb material that we use as the cockpit floor support. Uh, up in here, you can see some of the Travera that we use, where we're going to put the safety gear door, where we need a lot of screw retention. Um, so everything in this deck, the materials that were used were, were selected for a specific purpose and to do their job the best way possible. I see. Yeah, I've, I've looked at a lot of boats. I know some manufacturers actually screw the, the leaning posts and the T-tops directly down into the fiberglass floor, and I see these little inserts cut out on the on the bottom here. Can you explain what those are? That's right. Uh, we actually don't use aluminum. We do drill and tap our leaning posts and our T-tops, but we use a material called phenolic. And the reason for that is that over time, a stainless fastener and an aluminum plate can create a galvanic reaction, and uh, they basically bond themselves together and rust together. With the phenolic material, we'll never have to worry about that. You'll never get into that battery situation. And uh, it, it'll uh, just as strong as the aluminum, and it bonds just as well with the uh, composite materials that we use. Wow, very impressive. All right, Josh, let's take a look at the small parts assembly department. All right. Here you can see some of our consoles. They've already got the bait wells installed with our light blue gel coat, same color we use in the release wells. And here you can see a helm that's uh, already got the helm face attached. And they've, uh, they've got everything cut out and ready to go into assembly. Wow. 
Yeah, Nick, I've seen in a lot of other bay boats, some of the competition will use a, uh, a white face or maybe a, a, a simple bezel, trim bezel. Tell us a little bit about the thought process behind having the darker color on the face of the helm. Yeah, we really wanted a, a yacht grade helm in a bay boat. And uh, one of the things people don't realize is that at the end of a day with a lot of uh, bright sun reflecting off white gel coat or the water surface, you get a lot of eye fatigue. And uh, that can shorten tempers and then that can make for short days and that kind of thing. So, sure. The, uh, the darker colors really help knock down that secondary glare and, uh, and preserve the fatigue at the end of the day. The other thing it allows us to do by having it as a secondary part is we're able to mold in the steps in the bottom mm -hmm. and have two positions. One you can lock your heels into for running and another one you can put your feet up for cruising. And uh, we don't have a, a cheap plastic box that's there that, that breaks down over time or is real drummy and noisy. Uh, so it really allows us to do a lot of creative uh, yacht grade features in a bay boat. And these are also available in other color match options like black or some of the darker blues. That's right. Yep. Interesting. Well, let's take a look at a hull and a deck that are ready for assembly. Here's one of our hulls now. You can see that the stringer grid has been installed. The foam has been uh, placed in all the outboard cavities. The grid itself has been pumped full of foam. And we've uh, painted the bilge, we've painted all the storage compartments. So the, this hull is ready to go up into assembly. Uh, what about the pipe there, Nick? What's that for? That's our rigging tube, and you can see it's oversized so that uh, we can get all of our uh, necessary cables and controls through there. But also, after the fact, if the owner wants to add uh, features to his boat, it makes it really, really easy to get from the back of the boat to the console and run his own wiring after the fact. Good for rigging afterwards, yep. yep. What, uh, I see a little scribed line here, Nick. Can you tell us what that is? Sure can. This, uh, this is kind of unique to us. We, uh, we actually break the line, the surface of the gel coat on both the hull and the deck. And the reason being is that once this hull and deck joint is brought together, this is the point of impact of your boat. If you're going to hit a piling or a dock or anything like that, this is the point of contact where it's going to hit first. And if you really hit it hard enough, it is possible to fracture the surface of the gel coat uh, where, the surface, uh, where the screw goes through. But by putting that scribe line in there, we stop the propagation of the crack it can't get out past the rub rail Makes sense. over time. So again, it preserves the boat and, and really protects your investment over the long term. Neat, neat little feature, attention to detail. That's, that's very neat. Yep. That's the voice of experience there. <laughs> All right, well now that we've seen lamination, let's take a look at the assembly process. This is uh, one of the hulls, and you can see most of the components are already installed. The water tank, the fuel tank, all the pumps are in place, the plumbing is, is installed, all of our rigging for the engine is in place. Uh, everything's about ready uh, for deck assembly. Looking at the uh, fuel tank here, I, I notice it almost appears it's got some sort of a coating on it. Uh, is that correct? That is. It is. It's a coal tar epoxy coated aluminum fuel tank. And uh, we're fully EPA certified with all the emission requirements. We use a carbon canister system on it just like you have in your vehicle. But that coal tar epoxy coating on that aluminum tank ensures long life. It is basically chemically impervious to any kind of solvents, bleaches, cleaners, acid rain, things like that that you might encounter uh, that flow off the deck of the boat that could potentially get into that compartment. So it's good for the life of the boat. Yeah, and you can also see the cables that we discussed earlier going through that routing tube uh, really does keep everything really clean. That's right. And you can see how much space it still remains in that tube for adding options later on down, down the line. And I'm assuming you guys run sort of a, a snake wire or a snake string to be we able do. to pull new yep, wires yep, through? Yeah, we leave a chase wire yep, for the owner. Uh, anybody wants to add something new. That's awesome. Really start to see it coming together. Well, Josh, here we're uh, nearing the end of the production line process on a 25. And you can see we've uh, got the hard top installed, the engine's installed, and the boat's being prepped and uh, getting ready for shipment. Awesome. Well, after the 25-day uh, build process from start to finish, uh, what are some of the final steps that you guys do before sending the boat out to the uh, receiving dealership? Well, we have a number of quality control procedures. There's lists here on the boat where people take notes, and they'll make note of any defects or cleaning that needs to be done. Uh, then they'll make sure that they get the boat packed properly with things like coolers and the owner's pack. And, They'll go through any electronics installations, make sure those are working correctly. Uh, and then last thing they'll do, they'll get her all cleaned up, wrapped, and uh, a coat of wax on it, loaded on a trailer, and she's ready for delivery. Well, Nick, you guys built a beautiful boat. I uh, really appreciate you showing us around the factory and uh, showing us how these things are put together. Thank you hey, very much. My pleasure, Josh, anytime. Well, wow, guys, you can see Creval builds a, a beautiful boat. Excellent build process. You know what, me personally, I've had my eye on one of these boats for quite some time. I'm thinking about taking a storm cloud gray one home. You guys can see the stocked boats at our dealership, westorlandopowersports.com. 
or if you guys want to see more information about the boats, you can visit www.cravalboats.com, made right here in Wildwood, Florida. Thanks for joining us, guys.